everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, Introducing Portal, CQL's new data system. I'm Carly Friedman, CQL's Director of Technical Assistance and Data Analysis. We also have two presenters from Corner Edge Solutions, the portal developers, Russell and Steve, who will be walking us through the system in a bit later in the webinar. Just to let you know, this webinar is being recorded and will be available on our website in the coming weeks or two. So you can rewatch it later or share it with others after today's call. As an overview of today's webinar, we're going to begin with an overview of Portal, including the features and functionality. We'll then cover the direct benefits for agencies, including how your agency can use it for reporting, as well as how to monitor your quality. After discussing some logistics of account access, Russ and Steve will walk us through the actual system, including a demonstration of its key features and how to use them. Finally, if time allows, we might open up to questions, so please save your questions to the end unless you're having technical issues. If we run out of time, you can always answer, email me at data at the council.org after the presentation, and I'll be happy to answer them. But first, since we have a variety of different people on the call, just wanted to briefly begin with a description of the use of data in general, aka why should you use data? As many of you know, CQL is a data-driven organization. We believe that data is important to improvement of quality of life of people who receive services. But collecting data is only valuable if you do something meaningful with it. So how can data be used? So for example, agencies can use data such as from the personal outcome measures to guide individual plans. Having data about the people who serve, can, who the people you serve can help agencies ensure people with disabilities have the best possible support to maximize quality of life, including those rights to which they are entitled. Data can help agencies make decisions about areas of need and priorities, especially when resources are limited. Personal outcome measure data can help agencies have quality monitoring that uses outcomes rather than output. And agencies can use their data to provide information to states about their compliance. And how can Portal help you do that? First, let's start with what Portal means. Personal Outcome Reporting Tracking Analysis Logging. The, the name both is a neat little acronym and also a reminder of the many features of the system. Organizations and agencies commonly write person-centered plans, develop strategic plans, and launch new initiatives without the ability to evaluate effectiveness. In the human services field, where the con there are constantly constraints in time, money, and other resources, it's critical to provide evidence and database decisions. Portal offers an intuitive online platform to collect outcomes data, track quality enhancement efforts, and disseminate findings through easy-to-use reporting, which can be shared with key stakeholders. Portal can be used in a multitude of ways, including collecting and analyzing personal outcome measures and basic assurances data, tracking of ongoing quality enhancement efforts and support being provided, including assessments of person-centered plans, identifying priority areas for strategic planning, comparative analysis across individual, agency, and national levels, including improvement over time, development of annual reports or more frequently as needed, reporting to donors, executive leadership, board of directors, governmental agencies, et cetera, demonstrating return on investment for fundraising campaigns, organizational initiatives, programmatic decisions, and evaluating progress through the CQL accreditation process. Portal improves upon CQL's previous online data tool by integrating functionality, features and design that enhance the user experience, and incorporating more applicable reporting capabilities, which we'll be showing in a second, including a streamlined data entry process, including intuitive dashboards for viewing outcomes data and save and continue functionality for gradual data entry, analysis involving hundreds of different data elements, reporting options both with templated options and fully customizable options, 
comparison capabilities with national available aggregate data, export capabilities to a variety of different formats, unique login credentials for each individual user in your agency, with both, which both provides flexibility and who is able to enter your data, and extra data security so that people can only see what you want them to see. And finally, technical assistance provided by CQL staff. To maintain the integrity of the system and its data, exclusive access to portal is limited to agencies and systems utilizing CQL accreditation or CQL certification, along with those who have hosted a personal outcome measures assessment workshop. As you may know, in the old system, we had three different tiers of access with various costs and features. Many agencies also had to pay for access that wasn't very basic. In the new system, we've done away with all the different levels of access, and every agency will get the same level of access. In the new system, access to portal is included in the overall accreditation cost for the duration of the accreditation term. For agencies who currently have CQL certified interviewers, CQL certified trainers, or have hosted a CQL personal outcome measures assessment workshop, access to the system can be purchased through an annual subscription which can be renewed each year. The portal system will launch on May 1st. Upon launch of the new system, all accredited agencies, regardless of whether they have used the current system, will have accounts set up on their behalf and emailed to them. Those unaccredited agencies who meet the criteria, such as having certified interviewers or having held a personal outcome measures workshop, who wish to have access will receive accounts once payment is provided. Those of you that currently use our old system may be wondering what will happen to all of your data. Nothing will be lost. You'll notice in the new system, a large portion of data has already been uploaded. We'll be closing the surveys in the old system on launch day so that the developers can begin transferring the rest of the data, which will be finished within a few weeks of launch. In the meantime, the old system will still be accessible to view your data and make reports. Those agencies who do not wish to pay for the new system will ha also still have access to their data in the old system until June 1st, so they have time to export whatever they wish. So now I'm going to turn it over to our developers, Russ and Steve, to walk us through the portal system. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Russ from Corner Edge. I'm here to share with you the technical side of the presentation. So shortly you will see my screen and the system. As I'm waiting for that to appear, I wanted to just reiterate some things about the system. The Renrock system and the portal you'll have access to is a data-driven Tool. The key thing about it is data integrity. So our past system allowed us a lot of flexibility with freeform data, and this one is freeform as well, but it's just very much data-driven so that we can make sure your information and data integrity is much higher than it has been in the past. Therefore, your analytics and reports will be much more useful for you as we go forward. So I'm going to log in here as a test user. And before I do, I wanted to show you this forgot your password link on the bottom. If anyone from any of your organizations have any issues getting into the system, forgetting their username and password, anything like that, you can click forgot your password. And all you have to do is enter your email address and the system will reset your password and send it back to you. So. Hopefully that can be a quick fix if anyone has any trouble getting in. Once you do get into the system, it will show you your view of the world, depending on what you have access to. So this user is set up to do surveys, run reports, and be able to see the analytics and the data. So. Surveys are where we would collect our information. The system very simply guides you to begin with any surveys you have access to. In this case, we're demonstrating the Palm Adult survey. 
So for this survey, when I click to begin and I go into it, you'll see a list of all the interviewees that have been surveyed. Um, you'll see a status of the survey on the right-hand side here. And to add someone to the survey, you can just type their name. So I'm going to add Dave Smith here because I'm going to interview him and complete a survey for him. So you'll see his name has been added. I simply click Take Survey, and the Palm Adult Survey is then generated real time for me. Every group of that survey is shown here in this window. And I have this zoomed for you, so that's why it shows like that. Um, you'll find the system is compatible with all versions of Internet Explorer, Firefox, Chrome, any currently supported browser should have no problems accessing, accessing the system. Um, you'll also find that it may work well on a tablet as well. It's been designed for a larger screen. So while a phone may be able to access it, we really recommend using a larger device to utilize the system. And as you can see, there are different sections of the survey that you can fill in. It will show you a status as you go. I'm going to go into Babe Ruth's survey here. He has completed his data, so we'll have a view of what it looks like when the survey is complete. And there's a slight delay here when it loads the survey because it is dynamically generating the survey based on the data. And you'll see here each section is checked off because I've completed it. If I check into the demographics section here, you'll see it'll go through a load process, access the information, and it'll show me my questions. All the questions are separated in each section by background color, so it's very easy to see each different question. And the questions have a lot of logic behind them as well. So in certain situations where we need to know more information, we may have the system ask you for it dynamically. We are cleaning the data as you put it in. So if, you, if we're looking for a date field, if we're looking for money, if we're looking for an email address, the system's going to check that stuff when you submit it to make sure it's accurate, and it'll prompt you when it doesn't find it. For example, I'm going to go to a different section here. Okay, so on question 82, for example, when I check other, it's going to ask me to give more details. Now you'll see the comments window pop up, and I'll be required to type more details here in that window. If you don't provide those details, when you go to submit the survey, it'll prompt you and say, hey, question 82 needs some comments, please fill them out. Okay. So we are going to validate the information, any of the required questions it'll prompt you for, and let you know as you go. We're also going to try to save you time. So like you see here, question 86 says, you do not need to answer this question. If there are dependent questions in the system that you don't have to answer because of a previous answer, we're going to hide them from you so you don't have to worry about it to make it as easy as possible to get this done. For example, if I change the answer to 85, now I do have to complete 86. Likewise, if I change it back to no, it'll switch back to not being required, and that question will no longer be needed. So you'll see things like that throughout the system to make your life easier. As you go through each section and fill out answers, you'll be able to continue to go to the next section here at the bottom. So this continue button at the bottom, that will automatically save your answers from that page and take you to the next section. If you fill out a section and you decide you're done for the day or you're, you need to stop the interview process, be sure to click save answers because the system is web-based. It may, it's important for you to save your information before you close your browser. So when I click save answers here, it will ensure the system is saving my answers on that page, okay?
Now, one key thing to note, you'll notice that I have a save answer showing at the bottom here. That is for the global set of surveys. It is not for this specific survey. So it's kind of grayed out. I can't really click on the bottom one here. I can, however, click the one that's in the window. Just the way these surveys are structured, each of these different surveys pops up a new window that I can work in. So just be aware of that. Um, so if I go back into the Babe Ruth survey here, we've filled out a lot of these answers already. So I can load this survey and go ahead and complete it. I'll show you what that looks like. So when I submit this survey, it's going to run through a validation process for all the questions we filled in. Again, checking the data, making sure the inputs are good. And when it's done, it will either tell me, hey, you need to fill out another question, or it'll show me that it's complete. This process does take some time because it's checking every question and it's checking every dependency in the system to make sure it's okay. So you'll see here that the survey results have been completed and this is done. I can close this survey box with this red checkbox on the top right. And you'll see here on the survey that the Babe Ruth survey is completed. And if I need to, I can check and review that survey right at the top. So if I'm going to the next survey, you'll also see here when I load it that section one is complete and or in this case, not complete. But as I go through each section, it'll show a checkbox here for each section that's been completed. I went to go into the Don Mattingly survey. Dave Smith has not done his work yet. So you can see here, I finished the demographic section. And that's that. So that's an overview of our survey process and how we're going to collect the data. Um, if for some reason there's another person in your organization that needs to complete interviews and they are not in the system yet, you can use this click here to invite another person link, fill out their information, and our team will get an email that will validate for security purposes, to make sure they're a valid person to add to the system, and we'll add them as well to help you with the interview process or this specific survey. So that's available to you if you need it. And that's a quick overview of our survey process. Next, I'm gonna talk about reports. So once we get your data into the system, this is how we can do a data export. Everyone to start off will have one template they can use in the reporting system to export all of your survey data. So we call this a report profile. As we grow the system and build more reports, these will show up here. So we have a report inbox. And this inbox is basically the destination of all your reports. So when you run a report in the system, it's going to save it here in the report inbox. And you'll be able to say, what reports did I run on this date? On these statuses, you'll be able to see the criteria of the report that's there, and you'll be able to rerun that report if you want right from here in the inbox. So if you have run your report, you wanna see it again, you can run it here. And you'll see it goes right from pending to completed, gives you a status of it. To download a report, you just simply click on it, and it'll prompt you to save it. In this case, this is an XML export of all of the data from the Babe Ruth survey in this case. So you'll see each individual field, what collector it was on, and the ID information, as well as all the answers for the questions in a CSV format or XML format in this case that you'll be able to manipulate on your own later. So at your fingertips, you can, from the start, export all of your survey data immediately. So that's the report inbox. As we add more templates to the system, like I said, you'll start off with 
your collector data export that will be there. So that's the reporting and export data process. From an analytics perspective, we have a real-time web analytics tool that gives you some more graphs and similar report views that you're used to in your old system. So the important thing with this is we need to make sure we're on the collector. So in this case, I am a user at the test one collector, okay? We have levels here in the system. So we need to navigate to where we live in the system and then we can run reports. So these views are tied to this infrastructure. And in this case, for this view, I've one mail survey has been completed. So as you complete more, you'll see this report. Um, there's also a detail report that shows the information on every single question and the stats on that. So you'll see as you go through by date, um, by response, these graphs will be more intelligent as your data gets put into the system. Um, we are releasing shortly a, the ability to export any of these graphs as pictures, so as a JPEG. We're also offering this data as a CSV file if you need it for other reporting purposes. So this report builds dynamically as I scroll through the system and you can see the graphs for every single question you have. And again, as you have more needs or different reporting views that you'd like, we can work with the CQL team to make sure we have those for you. And these will show at your company level or collector level. So that's a brief overview of the analytics portion of the system. So that's a quick overview of our new data collection portal and what I wanted to show you today. Um, Carly, what else do we want to cover? So now I think we can open up our question and answer. It looks like we've received a few. Um, so I will just read them out and then we'll go one by one and answer them. So the first question is, do all questions have to be answered in the data system? There are some data points that we do not collect in the current database. And I can answer this one is, um, the short answer is no, not all questions need to be answered. We were cognizant of the fact that not all agencies use our system the same way. So the only ones we have required are if the support is present and if the outcome is in, in place. So just those main um, outcome and support pres present questions. And then also if you answer another question that asks for follow-up, you would have to do the follow-up. But if you had skipped those questions, you would have to answer those follow-up ones. The next question is, one question on how to get valid user access will be there. Will there be a con? Will we be contacted for a list of names? So the way we're going to do that is we have contact information for all the agencies that use our current system, as well as the agencies that are accredited. Um, for all of those people, we use that contact information to create kind of a default account, and from there on launch day. You will, that person will be receiving an email about your new account and how to start that up and create your password, everything like that. From there, if you need to add staff, you can email us about that. And we can add those staff added to your agency or as Rush showed you, you can use the button where you enter that information and add the staff that way. If you need to change who the default user is because you might want someone different than the person we initially set up, you can just contact us as well, and that's very easy to switch. Next question is, how are the collectors linked so that there are reports by organizations or program? Um, Russ, do you want to take this one? It's a little technical. Sure. Um, can you repeat it? Mm -hmm. So how are the collectors linked so that there are reports by organizations or programs? 
Okay, so each collector has access to all data under that collection collector. So um, if there are people that have, need to have access to multiple collectors, that's available. Um, the collector data, no matter what survey you're filling out, is stored in a data structure under that collector. So we can provide access to both the historical data as well as any current survey data that has been collected, whether it's POM or otherwise. So we can provide users from your organization to all that information at that level. Um, does that make sense or answer the question? I believe it does. Let me just pull up the next question here. The next question is, will written instructions be sent out to use about the database? And the answer to that is yes, we are planning on making a kind of an informational guide about the basics. Also, as I mentioned, this webinar is recorded, so you'll always be able to watch it again to see how Russ went through the system. Next question says, what will happen to unfinished surveys in the old system on May 1st? Does our agency need to complete all active surveys before that date? So any unfinished surveys in the old system, as long as it's partially saved, that data will be exported to the new system. Um, as I mentioned, it might just take a few weeks because it's very complicated to transfer all the data, but you don't need to finish that survey. But in the new system, you also won't be able to go back to that historical data to edit it. You'll be able to use it for your reports or anything like that, but to finish the survey itself. So I would either recommend if you need to finish the survey, go back and do that before the first in the old fluid survey system. If you don't need to finish it and just want it as is, that's totally fine and we can we'll transfer it either way. Next question, is there a summary that can be created for a specific survey to give to the person and team? A long report is overwhelming. So I believe this question is kind of related to the analytics feature. We will have a report that, so Rush showed you the report that's the detailed of every single question, but we'll also have a report by just the main outcomes and support. And I believe you should be able to filter that by individual surveys. Will there be a way to run individual reports that include comments about each of the POM outcome supports so that we can send a report to the person and their team? Kind of similar to the last question, so there will be, um, in this new system, they're called analytics. In the old system, they're called reports. But there will be an analytics feature about the, out, the comments that you should be able to export. It's my understanding that the database was available to use with no additional fees if the organization is accredited. That is correct. So um, both in the old system and the new system, you would have access with your accreditation. In the old system, you'd have very basic access and would have to pay if you wanted to upgrade to all these nice features. But in this new system, everybody that is accredited will get access to everything included in their accreditation. Is using the portal mandatory for accredited organizations? Absolutely not. Um, it is up to you. We are going to send you information when we launch that gives you access, so it'll be set up and ready to go if you'd like to use it, but you by no means are required to. Can you change the answer after the survey has been completed as the person's life situation changes? Um, Russ, can you edit after it's been completed? Yeah, that's up to the survey and how we're using each survey. Some of them we can allow. It's, it's a switch we can turn on, whether or not the user can access it or not. Um, so if you've completed a survey in January and you want to go change it in June, it's up to CQL if that affects accreditation or if that affects the data and whether or not we allow that, but it is capable. We are capable of doing that. Yeah, likewise, I would just say, mm -hmm, sorry, go ahead. Likewise, if you have to update that data year to year, 
on the same person, we can set it up so that it's pre-filled with last year's answers if needed. Yeah, I would just say the Palm personal outcome measures is not designed to, throughout the year, go back and edit individual um, portions. If the person's life situation does improve, that's great. And I think you would just possibly interview them again. And we could, as Russ mentioned, copy over that interview. So it's a, a new interview, and you could just edit the information from there. Um, so it is a possibility, but um, we don't want you just constantly over the years going and editing that really, that interview. Um, and, and another way is if you have multiple, that's a good way to measure improvement over time of the same person. The next question is, in the past, I was able to email out a link to the staff doing the interview to input the data after they completed the interview. Will this still be possible? So this is possible, but in a different way. We'll no longer be having links, but instead you would have the staff person create an account or we would create an account for the person um, on their behalf. And then they would log in with their own unique email and password. Uh, again, this is for security reasons, so they can only access what's what you want them to access. And also just ease of use. Um, Sometimes people would accidentally send the wrong links and things would get a little muddied and lost. So it's a better way to do it. Is it possible to do a basic assurance or social capital index with the data from our organization? We do this a couple of times a year to look at aggregate data. So we will be adding to the system a basic assurances survey. And once that is good to go, we will be using that. And um, it's very similar to the Excel document that used with basic assurances where the agency inputs two columns and then CQL staff does the other. So we'll have that up there and you'll also be able to upload documents. As far as social capital indexes, we do have a plan to build an analytic report that calculates the um, social capital indexes from your personal outcome measures data in the system, which will be really cool. This is the same question about links to interviewers. Um, do the people who are entering the data need to be certified interviewers? No. So anyone that can enter data at your organization, they do not need to be certified. Does the system time out after so long while answering the questions on the survey, Russ? This one's for you. I mean, the system, yeah, the system is a web system. Um, so if for some reason a firewall or something on your side does a timeout on a web connection, it is possible that like a 20 minute timeout may be in a firewall on your side. But on our side, the system does have keep the lives in place so that it can stay open for a very long period of time. Um, I recommend if you are going to walk away from it for more than 20 minutes to hit save before you do, just in case. But we do have it designed to stay open for a long period of time without refreshing or dropping a connection. The next question is, is there a test user that our interviewers can use to learn before doing a survey? There isn't a test user per se, but what you can do is where you create the survey, you can just name it a test one. Um, obviously, all the data we showed you today was fake. So uh, the Babe Ruth interview was not real, believe it or not. Um, so you could just do that, play around with it, and then um, we can help you delete it if you want. Some organizations were given access to the database because they had certified interviewers or, or trainers. Will they be able to continue to use the database without charge? So only accredited organizations will have access to the database without charge. Um, everybody else, so those who have certified interviewers or trainers or have held a personal outcome measures assessment workshop will be eligible to pay an annual fee for subscription to the database. If I work for an agency and CQL does my agency, or I work for an agency and CQL does and CQL. Does my agency have to add me on a separate account? 
In other words, will my agency be able to see the interviews I do for my agency? Um, yeah, on the back end, this might be a little complicated, and I don't think we need to explain that, but we will be able to have your interview that you do for your agency show up in your agency account, even if you work for CQL. Also, I missed the first few minutes. What are the fees associated with using the database? So I'm not sure if this is coming from an accredited person or not. Um, if it is, again, it's included in your accreditation. If it's not, um, it's uh, $1,250 a year. Um, and that is for people that either have held a training, have certified interviewers, or have held a personal outcome measures workshop. You are all eligible to pay for the system. Does the system give data on specific individual scores or just an overall agency score? To kind of cover this, there will be ways to do both across your agency data and filter by particular individual. Is there a limit to the number of users an organization can have? I don't believe so, but I just want to check with Russ to make sure. No user limits, that's correct. Okay. To clarify, can you report, run a report by program? Not sure what you mean by program. Um, but there are many different ways to filter your report, and you will be able to actually kind of create your own as well. Can you look at data specific to a person or a company and compare to the nation? So we, we did cover kind of looking at individuals versus across your company. And the cool new feature of this system, which wasn't available in the old system, is that you'll be able to compare your agency data to the rest of the data we have for the nation. So you can see in, you know, say for intimate relationships, do more people have intimate relationships present in your organization versus the nation, or is this something you might need to improve on? Is the new system starting May 1st or June 1st? So the new system is starting May 1st. You might have gotten June 1st because that's when we are closing access to the old system. So you have until June 1st, if you use the old system, to look and export your historical data. What day can we no longer enter into fluid surveys? That would be May 1st. What does that report look like? So do you mind pulling that back up? Um, the example we have, because we this is a test account and there's only one survey, there's not a lot in there, but this is, and just to keep in mind again, the word report, the way we used to use it is a little different here. This is more like a data export, whereas the new analytics system is more like the old report. So you'll, it's basically just a data export of every single question here, and then the reports feature is more attractive like we showed you. In the old system there was a place for basic assurances. Does the system have this? Yes. This is being worked on worked on right now and finalized and we will shoot soon be having it shortly and we'll have an announcement when that happens. Does the system compare surveys for the same person to see improvement or decline year to year? You could definitely um, if you have the same person interviewed over multiple years, we're hoping that you'll be able to make a report where you compare um, if they've improved over the years. And sorry, I just did a report, but I meant analytics. Have you a set of fee structure for organizations that are not accredited? I mentioned it's just one fee rather than the three levels because now everyone is getting the same level of full access. And that's $1,250. And for those organizations that are not accredited, that are interested in access, on our website at c-q-l.org slash portal, you can find a lot more information, including a little form to fill out if you're interested in getting the new system. Just making sure I understand using this system would not cause the membership fees to increase, right? No, it is built into your accreditation cost. So if you're accredited agency and you want to use this system, you don't have to pay any extra.
if a survey was submitted and you discover an error, you have to contact CQL to make changes. So right now, we have it so that you can't edit your historical data because of the POM issues that I discussed. So you could just contact us and it would be really easy for us to help you do that. This is kind of the same question. What about making edits in the survey in the database? Oh, no, sorry, this is before the survey is complete. In the way the current surveys allow now. Yeah, so as you can see, you can, as Rush is showing you on the screen, um, these are not really filled out, but um, they would look very similar if you just saved them but not submitted them, oh, just like the one he's showing. And you can just open back up and change it no problem. And then you would just hit submit when you're done. So he's making that change. And he's saving it, or if you were totally done, you could hit submit. And it you save it and it'll exit and it'll be listed there just as it was before. Are the questions exactly the same as they were in fluid surveys? Any additions or deletions? So I'm not sure if you heard, but we had a webinar, I think it was last week, about some changes that were made in the personal outcome measures. Um, basically, we did a read validation and it, according to this statistical analysis, it said there were five factors instead of the original three. So what we've done, basically in timing it with this new data system launch, is we've reorganized the questions so that they fit with those new five factors, which is my human security, my community, um, my relationships, my goals, and my choices. So we just reorganized the questions. And then also, um, we made sure that the data system aligned perfectly with the personal outcome measures manual. So you may have noticed some discrepancies that went both ways. There were questions in the manual that weren't in the dat old database, and there were questions in the old database that weren't in the manual. So we made, the every made sure everything matched up to make it as clear and easy as possible, and we will be launching that manual um, by June, both electronically and in print. And if you would like more information about that, you can, um, I'm not sure if it's on our website yet, but that webinar will be on our website. It was recorded. And we will also be having another webinar, I think May 9th, which you can register for our website, about how the decision-making changes, sorry, decision-making questions changed a little bit for that, those changes that we made. But really, there were no major content changes. This was all mostly language changes and, again, those two factors. So what is the turnaround time for CQL to add a staff person's assistant system to enter an interview? So this would actually be corner edge that would be adding them. I imagine it's pretty quick, but Russ, do you have a typical time, turnaround time to add people? Yeah, typically it's within an hour, the latest same day. So that's very quick. Um, next question, how can I access the recorded version of this webinar to present to my directors? We are not using the current database model. So this, data, this webinar will be added to our website within a week or two, so you can find it on there. To make sure I understand, we should have our unreliable interviewers add, enter data into the portal and run reports from that. Is this different from CQL's database? I'm not sure what your question means. Is this portal different from CQL's database? It is the same thing. It's, I, I believe that's what you're asking. Um, we just named this the portal. Um, and it's your choice if you want to add data from just certified interviewers or non-certified interviewers as well. Um, that's, that's really up to you and your agency to make that decision. We have a net network accreditation for our state system. Will we be able to, to sort for different sites, providers, in our network? Um, it really, this one it might depend on the user. So I think the person asking this is the lead user. So if you are, say, the default user for that entire network accreditation, you will be able to sort per collector or agency, sorry, collector is the word for agency in the system. So if you were, say, say for Tennessee, if you were 
the default user for Tennessee, you'd be able to see all those agencies and their data by agency. If you were within Tennessee and within one of those agencies, you would only be able to see your own data. Is there an API that we can access? Russ? There's not currently an API offered. Okay. And, okay. Is there a way to have interviews scored for the POM assessment? I'm not sure what this question means. Is there a way to have an interview scored for the POM assessment? I mean, after you enter all the data, it, it will tell you what, what outcomes and supports were present. What is the fee for an agency purchasing with certified trainers? We've gone over that, 1250 Can we schedule exports of data? So along with the control you will be granted with this new system, you will actually be the ones exporting your data. We no longer have to do that for you. So you don't have to schedule them. You can do it yourself whenever you want. We'll be able to see the PowerPoint to this webinar. Yep, it will be recorded in the webinar itself. What is the projected date for the basic assurance of survey to be available? Uh, we don't have a projected date. It is pretty close to being done, though, so I would imagine in the next month or two. How do we have a user made inactive if they leave the agency? You just contact us, and we can do that. It's very easy. It's basically like a flip of a switch. Oh, someone said disregard my question. I'm sorry if you answered this already, but as staff changes, do we add and subtract users? Again, contact that us. It's super easy for us to do that. Will all users to the database at our agency have three subsites, or will they given, be given only the survey subsite? Um, that will, there are different levels, so the main person will have access to everything. And if you want people to just have access to surveys, you can do that as well. You can limit what they can see. When will you be adding the children's personal outcome measures? That one is also being developed. Um, we wanted to get the adult done first because it is used most frequently, but I would say that that should be there in a few months. Will all the basic assurance information that is in the current database be transferred to the new portal? And so everything in fluid surveys is being transferred to this new system, all that data. The personal outcome measures, we did some up until November, and then the final, because it's very complicated to do, the final bit we'll be doing as soon as we close the old system. We want to make sure all the data gets in there. Can data be exported from a e-record keeping system, i.e. Therap? I think you mean imported to this system? Um, right now, it's not currently set up to be imported through those kind of programs, but that could be something we could work on. Will the individual data and food surveys be transferred to portal? Yes. Oh, someone commented another question. Let's see. Oh, okay. So they're clarifying on one of the questions earlier. Um, they said, I think the question might be the system add the total outcome and supports present. So, for example, you would get a score of 11 out of 12. So, in our current system, or I should say old system, if you are familiar, we do have a report that is just a very simple, just list the name of the outcome and says if, gives you a one if it's present and zero if it's not, and it adds them all. We will have a similar analytic report in this new system. Does it separate outcomes from sports on the scores? Yes, absolutely. Is there an administrator level where we can monitor what other viewers have pending? Yes. So we can set who the default user is, and they will have that administrator level access that can so overarching over the other people. Is there a fee to get a person in our agency trained as a certified interviewer? Yes, so there's separate from this whole process, there is um, a process that interviewers need to go through, a certified trainer, sorry. Definitely, there's a whole process that they need to go through um, to get certified as trainers, and there's a fee involved with that. If you contact us, we can definitely give you more information about that. Um, that looks like the end of the questions, unless we receive any more. Oh, 
just one popped up. Can there be more than one default user? Russ? Yes, there can be any number of admin users instead of survey users. We can differentiate those if needed. Um, the Opus Sum came with four hours of training. Does this include training hours? We're kind of getting away from you know specifying four hours of training, but certainly if you need technical assistance, you can email me at data at the council org and I'll be happy to help you with your questions. Do we have any more questions? Oh, there's another one. If we already accredited, but we have never used the system, how do we get a login? So every person that is accredited or agency that is accredited will be emailed a login on launch day, so on May 1st, regardless of if you've used our current system or not. We just figured this was the best way to do it and make sure everyone gets access. So answer is check your email on May 1st. Any final questions? Wait a few more seconds, see if anything pops up. Okay. Well, it looks like that's it. If you think of anything after, you can email me at data at the council org, or again, as I mentioned, on our website, e q l org slash portal. There's more information about the system, how to gain access if you're not accredited, and it'll probably be the very same location that this webinar will be posted. Thank you very much for uh, attending today.